Hello and welcome to another Warhammer 40k Imperial Guard Tactics video and today we shall be rounding off this sort of mini series that we've been doing within the series, seriesception shall we say um, and that has been the series we've been doing about transport so we talked about the Chimera and the Torox and how the Chimera is grey and the Torox is terrible and then we did one a little bit about the Torox Prime and how I think it's amazing, except for it costs a little bit too much points-wise and really money-wise as well. Um, but to round it all off, we're now going to talk about a formation, which is very transport-heavy and it's quite good, to be honest. Um, and that is the Emperor's Blade Assault Company from the Montca Supplement. Um, in fact, nearly every guard formation is from the Monk Cast supplement, apart from a few which are from the uh, Red Wire supplement. But, back to the video. Try to keep this one fairly short and sweet. Um, the formation. Uh, what do you need for it? You need one company command squad, three units of veterans, and one to three hellhound squadrons. The restrictions are the company command squad and each of the units of veterans must either take a Chimera or a Torox as a dedicated transport. So sadly, no Torox Primes for this formation. Now, what do you get for your formation? What's the bonuses? You get clear the area where units from an assault company have the preferred enemy special rule against enemy units within six inches of an objective marker, which is good. And then you also get objective secured. Infantry units from an assault company have the objective secured special rule. A unit with the special rule controls objective markers even if an enemy score unit is within range of the objective marker, unless the enemy unit also has special, uh, the special rule. We all know what OBSEC does. This is, what, this is the only guard formation, apart from obviously a CAD or a, a allied detachment, which gets objective secured. So it's important. It's good. Now, um, this formation is obviously can be taken as part of the uh, Cadian Battle Group, um, but is probably one of the f one of the ones that you would take independently. Uh, you don't need to take it as part of the battle group. Um, there's not too much you would benefit from this. Um, yeah, I mean, the only thing you'd really benefit from is the officer would be able to uh, do 3d6 on his orders, which is pretty good. And you would also get rerolls to one when firing your lasguns, which is less useful because obviously if you're fighting over objectives with this formation, which is what it's for, this formation is that you say this, you basically, you find an objective on the board and you pretty much say this formation is going after that objective. One way or another, I'm having it. So you don't really need the Lasgun one because you'll be rerolling ones anyway because you'll be fighting over enemy units within six inches of an objective marker. So it's important to remember you don't need to be near the objective marker. Your enemies have to be near it. So it's quite good. Now I quite like this formation, but how would I run it? Well, straight away I'm going to tell you, don't bother with Toroxes. Okay. If the formation said when you are within six inches of the formation, of the uh, of the objective marker, you get uh, um, for enemy. I would probably consider toroxes because your objective would be to cheaply get onto the objective, and then use your preferred enemy as much as possible. As it is, you don't need to get onto the objective particularly quickly. You need to get there. And you need to make sure you get them alive. So the best way of doing that is in a nice Armour 12 Chimera. Because the minimum number of Armour 12 units you'll be featuring with this formation is 5. The minimum. Because you'll be taking one company command squad in a Chimera. Three units of veterans in Chimeras. And a Hellhound. So 5. Now. So we've established everyone's going to go in Chimeras. The loadout of these Chimeras. I would obviously stick with the multi-laser turret because most of the time the objectives you'll be fighting over will be in cover and if your enemies are in cover 
or six inches near the objective so they'll probably be in cover the extra ap of the heavy bolter wouldn't help all that much okay but i would definitely so i'd stick with the multi lasers it would it allows you to lay down some serious strength six firepower on the way up which is good the hull i would be very i'd be very tempted to consider heavy flamers on your chimeras okay because how i can envisage this formation working is it rolls forward firing multi lasers which you can only move six inches and fire one weapon at full ballistic skill with the chimera so it rolls forward slowly firing the multi lasers the lads gonna raise are going off people are shooting out of the back the veterans shooting out of the back and then when you get close to the enemy you continue to roll four sixes and then you lay down the heavy flamer and if the objective's going to be in cover which it should be if your opponent is defending it properly or has placed it properly you get to heavy flame with them and that becomes more useful because the heavy bolter you know but the heavy bolter is, is of equal merit okay the heavy bolter is of equal merit because you might find yourself in a situation where your chimera gets its multi laser destroyed heavy bolt is a good backup weapon so honestly the, uh, the only thing i would say is you definitely want to, the multi laser turret but the heavy flamer or the heavy bolter is entirely up to you now the Hellhound Squadrons, one to three. I would seriously consider taking two. A nice in between. Okay? Um, and if you are going to take two Hellhounds, I recommend you take Hellhounds. Okay? You take basic Hellhounds. Um, because this, the Hellhounds will be able to go forward quickly or slowly, depend, you know, and maintain the iron line. But the Hellhounds have the potential to go forward and burn the shit out of your opponents. Okay, which is good. I, I've done a video on Hellhounds. I personally think the basic Hellhound is the best one. That's Strength 6, AP 4. Very tasty. Torrent, very tasty. Okay. So, you know, I would go for basic Hellhounds. Now, what would I give the units in the vehicles? Well... Again, I th again I think it's it's quite it's good it's a good formation because it's so versatile, but you're definitely going to want plasma guns or melter guns. But what I would consider is remember the Chimera has only got two firing points. Most of the time you're going to roll up and you know fire out of the Chimera. And you're only going to get out of the Chimera if you need to because veterans are squishy. And Chimeras have lads going to raise, so you don't really need to get out of them to uh, to to use your extra firepower. You can still lads gun things. You don't really need that, uh, which is good about the Chimera. Um, so my instinct would be to load up the company command squad. Potentially, you've got preferred enemy, which means you're re-rolling your ones, which means you're re-rolling your gets hot. Someone did mention that preferred enemy doesn't affect plasma gets hot for basic guys i don't know if that's true i haven't seen it in the faq we're looking through it so if, correct me if i'm wrong but as far as i'm aware preferred enemy allows you to reroll once to hit which means it allows you to reroll your gets hot result as far as i'm aware if i am wrong please correct me in the comments and i'll put a little bit in the description saying edit this bit was wrong but assuming for this video it does allow you plasma guns are very good in this formation because it means that you can fire two plasmas out of the top of your hatch which is good that's what you want to do and you're not going to burn yourself to death with the gets hot so you want to consider uh, plasma guns but they are expensive but you definitely want melter guns as well so my advice would be to take um plasma guns on your company command squad and on I would say take plasma guns on your company command squad and because what you could do is to super mitigate the damaging effects of plasma you could take three plasma guns and a plasma pistol and have the last guy with um, a med kit maybe it's up to you okay but I would say take plasma on your company command squad 
uh, and then take melter, two melters on your veteran squads. Okay, so that's the very, so just to recap, I would take four chimeras, each with multi-laser and or heavy flamer, um, and heavy flamer or heavy bolter. And then I would take a hellhound, I would take two hellhounds, and then I would give my guys uh, the veteran squads, I would give two melter guns each, and I would give the company command squad plasma. Now, if you want to, you can stop watching the video here. But I'm going to explore now a completely alternative way of fielding this formation. Well, not completely alternative, but an alternative way to field this formation and a few things you should take into account. One, you're going to be going places with this formation. It's a very offensive-based formation. You're going to be going up to your enemy. You want to take his ground. It's his objective you're taking off him. He's going to be within six inches for you to get your preferred enemy. So it's, it's about taking away from your opponent's formation, which is good. It's not defensive. It's very, it's very aggressive. Because of this, it may be a very good idea to consider giving your veterans shotguns. Okay. Because... Melter guns are assault weapons, and you don't need to worry about las gun, about having the las guns for the extra range because you'll be most of the time using the las gun arrays on the side of the chimera. So by taking shotguns, what this effectively allows you to do is to have, when inside the chimera, both shotguns and las guns. And by the time you get close enough to your opponent, where your melter guns are going to be becoming effective, your shotguns are also in an effective range. Okay? So consider shotguns, because you already get lasguns on the Chimera, so you might as well give yourself that extra option by using shotguns on your guys. I have run shotgun melter gun vets before, with mixed success. You know, um, not but not with 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 good average to good results. I was facing at the time. I was facing the Tau gun line a lot, so obviously it struggled a bit. But there was something to be said for carapace shotgun vets. Now the other second point you might want to consider is for your third heavy weapon because you a third special weapon on the kind on the veterans. The heavy flamer okay because the heavy flamer you're not going to use it a lot of the time during the game but remember your the whole point of this formation is to go up to your opponent firing putting down shots with the chimeras burning the crap out of him with hellhounds but he's going to have forces there to defend and when you what happens when you get there with your chimeras the chimeras continue to lay down firepower your veterans disembark, give the target a good melter gun blast, give the target a good few pump action shotgun rounds, and also flame it. And then next turn, you know, considering the hopefully the opponent is taking you know a beating at this point, next turn you can then do the same thing again, shotgun him, melter gun, flame him. He hopefully shouldn't have very much left at this point, and you can charge in. And finish him off because all the weapons in that squad are assault. Quite good. Now, if you really want to start going to town on this formation, you can start giving the sergeants power weapons so that when you get into combat, you're guaranteed to do damage. But I think that is a step too far. I think you just want to. I think imagining it in my head, imagine there's a couple of tactical marine squads defending an objective, or a tactical marine squad and a transport. But let's, let's assume two tactical marine squads. Your firepower isn't going to get through the armor, so you're going to be chipping away, chipping away, chipping away. But, you know, you've got three assault squads here. So what's going to happen is you will drive up there. It'll take you about two or three turns to get there. You might lose a cat. You'll probably lose the hellhounds first because they're going to be up in your opponent's face. You'll probably have both marine squads down to about five dudes apiece by the time you get there, turn two or three. Then on your turn three, you get out. You continue to lay down firepower with the Chimeras. Let's assume the Hellhounds have died at this point. And then you give them a, a 
good. Triple shotgun, melter gun, heavy flamer blast. Kill a few more. Hopefully there'll only be about two or three guys left at this point. Next time you do it again, there's probably going to be one or two guys left. And you go in. It's about turn four now. So you're going to need to make decisive actions because the game could end next turn. The game could end on turn four or five. So you want to make sure that you're there turn four or five. And you finish the last guy off in combat, sit on the objective, bam. So this formation is not about getting somewhere really quickly, smashing it and holding it for the whole game. No, this, this formation is about moving up, methodically grinding your opponent down and then finishing him off in one fell swoop with a triple squad shotgun assault. Death thing. So consider it. That's probably quite expensive points wise. But you know, it's definitely you know, definitely a good idea, definitely worth considering. But overall, this formation is very flexible. If you are a player who likes to run veterans in chimeras, honestly, there's no reason for you not to use this formation ever. There's no tax units in it. As a guard player, you're always going to want a company command squad. As a guy, you know, as a let's assume we're talking about other guard players who aren't foot guard players, you know, mechanized players, hybrid players, armored players, they're all going to have a few veteran squads in Chimeras. Why would you not take this formation? Your objective secured. You don't need to worry about it. You are objective secured with this formation. If you like taking mech vets, never take a cad again. Take this. I've seen a very good army, which for guard, and I'm considering using it myself in a game. It's heresy because it's not foot guard. But what the guy did is he took the Emperor's Fist Armoured Company. So he had five Lumen Russes. And then he took the Emperor's Blade Assault Company with two Hellhounds. And it did really well. It did really, really, really well. Because he was going, he loved taking Meltavets anyway. So he thought, fuck it, why not take it in an actual formation where I get preferred enemy? It's free preferred enemy for what he was already taking. There's no tax units. Hellhounds are good. Chimeras are good. Veterans, if you don't take mass infantry, are good. Company command squads are good. There's nothing wrong with this formation. It's a very, very good formation. Is it competitive? This is what we always ask ourselves at the end of these videos. Is it competitive? Hell yes, it is competitive and relatively cheap as formations go. You know, if you really wanted to, you could take this Billy Bones, Billy Basic for about 600 points, 500 points. You know, if, if you just took, if you if you wanted to take this as cheap formation as cheap as possible, you could take Chimeras, you could stick just grenade launchers and flamers on your, on your veteran squads, you know, and take Billy Basic Hellhounds. You could do it for about you know four to five hundred points, which is very cheap for formation. However, it's this formation to me screams plasma guns and melter guns. And no one, you don't really want to take grenade launchers and flares on veterans anyway. Let's keep those viewed weapons for your for your infantry squads, your basic infantry squads. So yeah, just to sum up, this formation is good it hasn't got any tax units it's versatile it's tactical tactically flexible um, it has relative maneuverability it has good ish durability um, it's a jack of all trades master not and it can honestly be tailored for any battlefield situation and as a regular guard player so you know if i was to recommend this to someone who doesn't like running 300 infantry models or 200 infantry models i can wholeheartedly say that you should always take this formation. If you are a guard player and you always take three squads of veterans in Chimeras, just buy a Hellhound, bam. The Hellhound won't let you down, guys. It's a good little good little workhorse, the Hellhound. Those of you who use Hellhounds regularly, you can. I bet you'll, you'll back me up on this, hopefully, in the comments section. Hellhounds are good units. One of the best fast attack units we have are Hellhounds now. So, you know, use them. I hope you enjoy this video. I'll see you guys next time.